Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the webinar with Irish Water, uh, where they're going to set out uh, the scheme for for a first time getting money back from Irish Water, which is always uh, a, a nice a nice thing. We don't it doesn't normally happen, but look, it's very important because obviously, from the point of view of affordability and costs, it is great. One, the waiver, and two, the rebate from Irish Water kicking in. It's a it's a huge important thing for our industry, uh, and it's clear there's a lot of people interested. We've 140 plus and a number of others who couldn't attend but want to see the recording. So look. Um, I'll hand you over to Steve Everard, who's going to do the presentation, and followed by uh, Paddy O'Flaherty, who will do the Q&A at the back. And so, Paddy, do you want to say a few words? Just to... Yep. Thank you very much, Michael. Um, hi, everyone, and good morning, and thanks very much for joining us here today. Um, as, as Michael said, it's great to see so many numbers here, and it's, it's great to be working in collaboration with the IHP and the CIF again, which is fantastic. Um. Look, today, today's webinar is about the temporary time limited refund. And it's going to be a lot of information involved in it. As I said, there will be, Michael said, there is an awful lot of interest in it. Steve, Steve Everard is going to be giving the presentation. Steve is the Housing for All Program Manager for Ishka Aaron. So he has an in-depth knowledge of this actual refund and the process associated with it. He's going to go through it in the presentation. The presentation will be circulated afterwards um, through on you. But it is it is very important that any questions you have, you can put them through chat to myself directly, which is down at the bottom right hand corner or the Q&A section. Or even if there's a question that comes to mind afterwards, as I said, we have a strong working relationship with the IHBA and the CIF. You can direct that to Anya and she'll, she'll direct that back to ourselves and, and we'll be able to answer any questions as, as, as quickly and as smoothly as we can. Um, before before Stephen starts, I suppose it's very important just to acknowledge it's great to work in partnership, as I said, with the CIF and the IHPA that we want to do in Ishka Aaron, is work in partnership. Uh, this refund has come about in relation to the housing for all and to help um, you, the developers, to, to maybe produce more homes and more efficiently and, and more cost effectively. So we are hoping that it is something that is going to help the industry. It is very important as well, I suppose, to acknowledge before we start and hand off Stephen, do great work on he's done in setting up this um, from CIF. She's done an awful lot of work in the background. It goes unseen, but it's very much appreciated. Really appreciate Mike Keller with the lovely introduction. Um, it's always good to see a good smile on his face so early in the morning. Uh, as well as uh, thank you very much to Connor for helping us to work together, as we said, in partnership to deliver this information to yourselves. So without any further ado, as I said, any questions you have, if you can put them through the chat um, box or the Q&A or even direct them to Anya, direct them to myself and we'll have a Q&A session at the end. And if there's any questions after that, we're more than happy to help as much as we can. So look, I'm going to hand you over to Stephen Ever, the Housing for All Program Manager for Ishgear. Thank you very much. Thanks, Paddy. Appreciate that. Um... Um, yeah, look, I suppose we've developed these slides to kind of um, bring you through the process as it stands. And just look, before we start, just want to thank Connor, uh, Anya, uh, Michael and, and Paddy there for introducing me. And it's great to have the opportunity to present to you. And there's obviously massive interest in this scheme. So that's that's the reason we're here today. Um, I'm going to bring you through, uh, I suppose, the, the UE temporary time limited refund scheme for standard connections and how it's associated with the, uh, the department. Um, development contribution waiver scheme. Uh, we're going to look at the backgrounds, the key information from the department side, our conditions, um, ours as in UE criteria to allow us to refund, how we process it. So we are obviously a publicly regulated utility. We're subject to public spending code and the CNAG. So that kind of feeds into our conditions, our criteria, how we process it and the documentation we're looking for yourselves. And we have, uh, I suppose, a high level process uh, overview at the end of the uh, presentation as well. I'll show you how it should work, how it will work. A um, lot to get through today. Um, these slides are going to be shared after um, the webinar. And we've developed them in such a way that for people that couldn't attend today, they should be useful as kind of a training or, you know, a, a process guide on how this should work. So I'm going to start here now. Um, okay. So Basically, the scheme background, uh, it's obviously the department scheme uh, was used. It's to incentivize the commencement of housing development and help reduce housing construction costs. So it's temporary waiver in respect to development contributions. Um, from the department side, it's, um, you know, there's criteria associated with it. So it's a temporary scheme and it applies to permitted new residential developments that commence on site between the 25th of April 2023 and the 24th of April 
2024. There is a, a completion criteria within the circulars issued by the department. So they, they should be completed or the units should be completed not later than the 31st of December, 2025. And there is a reference to clawback arrangements as per the circular. So I just want to draw your attention to that as well. Obviously the full scheme details are available in the two circulars issued this year, 0423 and 082023. The last one being issued towards the end of July this year. Um, as part of the development contribution waiver department scheme, it also includes the introduction of the temporary refund scheme for ourselves this year in, in terms of standard connection charges. So what's in scope for us is refund of standard connection charges. So it's a refund scheme. So payment is required upfront before we can process a refund. And it applies to new residential developments, including new one-off houses. And what's out of scope, just to kind of make this clear, is obviously non-domestic or commercial development is out of scope. But say, for example, a mixed-use development, the residential units would fall part of the scheme. Obviously, the commercial wouldn't. Quotable charges must be paid in full and would not be subject to a refund. So I suppose you're all aware of quotable charges, an extension or an upgrade of a network to uh, facilitate a connection, they are still to be paid and they would not be refunded. Key information, I suppose, in the waiver scheme Again, I, I, I suppose I've all, already referenced this, but um, there are commencement criteria. So those dates are key. So you have to meet those commencement criteria to be uh, subject to the scheme. And the scheme is time limited, you know, as set without out within circulars. The developer has to meet the scheme criteria in terms of the commencement date and the completion date. And again, there is reference to a clawback there as well. From our perspective, in terms of how Ishka Aaron can manage this or how we do manage it, or we've built a process and a system behind this now and we're ready to go. Uh, it's publicly funded money. As I said, it's subject to the public spending code rules and CNAG controller and auditor general. And we're subject to the same time limits as the department waiver scheme. And the waiver refund uh, to the department has to be returned if the scheme criteria are not met. I suppose just clearly calling that out. Obviously, the department, you know, they have budgeted for this this year and into next year. And I suppose, look, just at a high level, we haven't had a massive amount of applications yet. And look, we are just looking for your support to get this moving. And we'll support you um, to um, get this process going as quickly as possible. Um, and obviously, you know, we just want to make sure that this is working for yourselves and supporting housing in line with the department circular. So in terms of Ishka Aaron's temporary refund scheme conditions, so obviously you'll need to have a connection offer. You'll have to have entered a connection agreement with Ishka Aaron and have met all the acceptance criteria. And by that, I mean payment of the full connection charge, standard decodable charges. We need a return of the letter of acceptance, payment of any required surety or security deposits, and any other conditions that might have been set out within the connection offer letter. Um, and then in terms of how we manage or process the refunds. So in terms of refund application documentation, so we're looking for yourselves to provide us with the following. And the first one here is called, you know, we call it out in bold because it is so important. It's the Appendix 6 Local Authority Letter of Approval, the LOA. And we can only refund units waived by the local authority under the Development Contribution Scheme. So the planning department will waive the number of units and we're reliant then on that letter of approval. It's a key control document for ourselves to process a refund. So without having that, without having it in the correct format, uh, we're in a position where we can process a refund. So like both pages um, need to be signed and stamped by the local authority. Page two is the contains the tables, and I'll get into this in more detail, but page two contains the, the specifics of the development, the number of units that will be waived and counting that we can refund. And I suppose just in terms of initial submissions, we're, we've had a few, a couple of submissions by um, some single domestics um, and some developers where the, uh, the letter of approval was not signed, it wasn't stamped. Um, it appeared that page two was handwritten and completed by the applicant. So look, we'll be asking yourselves basically to make sure what you're getting from the local authority planning departments meets the criteria so that we can, you can submit it and we can process as quickly as possible. Um, we'll also be looking for a completed Ishka Aaron refund application form, and this will just give us a bit more information in aligning the letter of approval with your connection agreements. 
um, a sign you refund scheme letter of undertaking, essentially basically um, that you're committing to the scheme criteria in terms of completion and so on. A site layout plan um, in PDF. And look, this is for the larger developments that are phased or have you know multiple phases. So look, it'll just give us, it'll make it simpler for us to support the assessment of phase developments and, and refund the quicker way. So you, if we know exactly what units um, form part of the refund application, a valid commencement notice. We would just be using this for reconciliation. The key document, as I said, is the letter of approval from the local party. Um, and social housing. So social housing are some elements, some, some social housing schemes aren't uh, subject to development uh, levies or development contributions. So they won't fall into um, the criteria of getting a letter of approval from the local authority. In that instance, we'd be looking for additional information, basically a manager's order or some form of documentation from the local authority housing department telling us, telling yourselves, telling us that this development meets the scheme criteria in term in line with what the government has proposed and it'll allow us then to process it. So look, in terms of um, refund payments, we will process uh, by check or EFT uh, up to 10 units, which you can decide is your preference. Anything greater than 10 units will be by EFT and um, any EFT payments or bank, bank, bank payments will be subject to a compliance check by UE for organizations seeking a refund. Um, in terms of processing a refund scheme, and look, as I said already, like we are a publicly regulated utility, we're subject to the public spending code C and AG. So we need to make sure that we are validating what has been sent in. I suppose it's to protect both ourselves, uh, yourselves, um, and and um, the government. We need to make sure we're refunding the correct person for the correct site and the correct number of units. As I said, key control for us really is the local authority level approval, we're getting that right, getting it in the correct format, stamped and signed on both pages. And in terms of validation, what we look at is a review of the original connection application and basically looking at the following details. It's the applicant name, the organization name matched the refund application, the applicant and organization address as the refund applicant, pay of the connection charge must be the same as the refund applicant both from ourselves and yourselves, obviously the person that pays is the person that we want to refund and you will want to be refunded. The site address details, the connection offer, so line with the letter of a, a group at all. So in terms of refund assessment, again, we can only refund the units that have been paid for, and it may differ from the number of units paid by the local party. And I suppose what I mean there is, if you go for a large uh, commencement notice, if you commence a large number of units in, in a large site, if you get uh, the letter of approval associated with those units, you may you may have a connection agreement that aligns exactly with those units, but you might have uh, a smaller connection agreement or you may have a, a larger connection agreement. So we're just going to have to assess that as they come in. And that's I suppose that's key in terms of um, making sure that, you know, if you're if you're looking for a number of units across the development, having a good map, you know, a good site layout indicating the number of units involved is, is going to make this much smoother and much more simple for all of us. Um, as I said, look, for larger developments, we're phasing approach applies. We're going to reset we're going to assess it um, based on each refund application in accordance with the, the local authority waiver and the LOA. Um, look, I, I've already touched on this and it is a key control document. So look, I just want to really emphasize what we're looking for. And as I said, the kind of initial um, submissions kind of just raise a few kind of um, areas where we felt we could we could look for improvements. So we've been in discussions with the department in the water services section, the planning section, and um, this is what we were seeing coming out. So look, we need a signed and stamped local authority letter of approval as part of the refund application in accordance with the temporary time of the waiver. So we need both pages of the LOA to be provided on local authority letterhead to you. So that's what you need to see. Um, both pages to be signed and stamped by the local authority when they provide to you. So you should be looking for that. Uh, page two of the local the letter of approval. But that table basically tells us what, what we can refund, what site it is, the number of units. So the local authority should be completing that digitally, not by hand and not by the developer. So you don't have to complete that. The local authority should give that to you completed, signed, stamped. 
Um, page two of the LOA contains, as I said, the specific site information, the number of units that have been waived uh, by the local authority department. And look, we can only refund the standard connection charge associated with the units that have been waived and as, as is evidenced on that letter of approval. So that detail in the letter of approval is key for yourselves and for us to make sure we can refund in a timely manner and correctly. Again, just in terms of social housing, because there obviously are a lot of social housing developments out there. So where the development contribution scheme, where, you know, where no development contributions can be waived because they're not subject, um, we need to provide, we need some form of adequate documentation from the housing section in the local authority, basically confirming that look, this development complies with the, the scheme criteria from the department or the government, and it can be waived in terms of uh, our the connection charges can be refunded refund again just in terms of uh refund application forms so look we have a connection refund scheme application form we'll be looking for you to submit that along with a site layout drawing indicating the residential units associated with the application a signed copy of the ishgair letter of undertaking for the connection refund scheme basically commissioning to abide by the scheme criteria that's all available on our website online. So there's a link there at the bottom of that slide. And again, these slides will be circulated to yourselves. Um, as noticed previously, you know, these details must must match the relevant connection agreement and the refund application before a refund can be made. So we need to make sure that we're again, as I said, refunding the right person for the right site for the correct number of units. And look, discrepancies in the information we'll have to go back to. I'd have to look for clarification. So that will slow down and potentially reject the refund application. Um, we'd be looking for a valid commencement notice as well to be submitted. But again, it's not a key control document for ourselves. It can be used for reconciliation where there's a question about something or unsure. But in reality, we're going to be looking at the letter of approval. And look, in terms of compliance check, and just calling this out, um, so refund payments by EFT to an organization will require a compliance check to be completed by ourselves. Again, in terms of um, just making sure we're doing the right thing, um, anti-fraud and so on. So we will provide you with an EFT mandate form and you will submit that to us or we will ask you to submit it by post. Again, just from an info security perspective, we don't want it coming in by email. Post is more secure and we can secure that information. We can um, store the information securely. And this form will allow us basically to complete your compliance checks as well as capture that bank information. Um, so we'll independently check There'll be another um, department in Nishkaren that will independently check, contact your organization for all the details. And look, it protects you, your company, and it reduces the risk of fraud. And that's the real reason that we do the compliance check. So again, we are refunding and giving the money to the correct person. Um, just as so well, the note and warning there, like failure to engage with the compliance check process or failure to provide correct information, it's just going to result that we need you to reapply. So your refund application will cancelled and their reapplication will be required. Um, and just coming on to our last slide, I'm conscious of time there, but at a high level, this is how the process will work. So you'd be looking, you will come to us with your letter of approval from the local authority planning department, basically evidencing that you're complying with the department scheme. You'd submit that along with a connection refund application to ourselves and you'd be including that um, letter of undertaking, letter of approval and the commencement notice. And step three then yeah, falls to us. Uh, Ishgar will complete a validation of all the documentation. And in the case of where an EFT payment is, is requested or is required as part of our business rules, um, we'll send you out the EFT mandate form. Um, and this will provide us detail to complete a compliance check and provide detail or provide your bank details securely. So once you have that EFT mandate form, once you complete it out and you send it back to us by post, we'll then complete our compliance check and um, refund reapplication if the compliance check fails. Look again, just if we get that detail right, if you're supplying contact information, that that is the correct person for the correct organization name. And I'm thinking about, you know, the more complex subsidiaries and, and different company names and so on. And our commercial team then, if that's all in order, that'll move to our commercial team. And I suppose this is probably a most interest for yourselves and the, and the, the members in CIF today. You know, it's the multi-unit connection refund applications. And our commercial team will assess the development phasing and the units um, be refunded and units that have potentially been previously refunded under a previous commencement notice and letter of approval and so on. 
And if all that's in order, we will process the uh, refund on system. We have a payment batch that runs weekly um, and, and the refund payment will be made following that. And I suppose just the last point there is again, just to call out that the developer uh, needs to meet. So you need to meet the scheme criteria and it's really around, you know, completion by December, 2023. And look, again, I'm just calling this out the clawback that may apply. Um, so look, I suppose just in terms of responsibilities, just to make this clear again. Um, so I suppose from your, from your perspectives to meet the department scheme criteria as they're currently set out, Having that valid letter of approval, again, I'm, I'm re-emphasizing this, but both page is signed and stamped by the local authority, and that's what you should be looking for. Obviously, submitting uh, the connection refund application, the letter of undertaking, and all the associated documentation to us, and if it's all in order, that will make everyone's life much easier in terms of processing and making sure we can get our refund back to you quicker. Uh, providing the EFT mandate and getting through the compliance check process. And again, it, it it likely seems like we're being overly cautious here, but again, it is to protect yourselves and your own company and, and prevent fraud, you know, so there's no one looking for a refund on your development. Um, and valid connection offer in place. So obviously it is a refund scheme. So having paid all the charges, um, provided the signed documentation and maturity and so on. And look, just to summarize, it is a refund of standard connection charges only. So that must be paid up front Quotable charges are to be paid in full and aren't subject to a refund. Um, the same applicant or organization, so we want to refund the person who's paid, and this will, must match the letter of approval from the planning department, matching the connection offer for the site and the person on record um, on our systems, and then it's actually paid into us. So look, that's I suppose it's probably a quick enough run through. We've developed these slides so that you know once they're provided to you and take them away, you know they should be a fairly usable guide to how to I suppose navigate the process. And um, I think we have time now for um, some questions. So I might just hand over to Paddy there and see if we have any questions. In. Brilliant, Steve. Thank you very much. Um, and look, thanks. It's great to see such a good number here on this today, guys. And again, just to really emphasize, it's great to work in collaboration with CIF and the IHBA. So look, I know there's a lot of information there and we've we've had some questions come in. I'm going to pose them, pose them to see if I suppose. But look, what we can do is anyone, any questions that come in after the fact, please circulate them through the CIF or the IHBA and, and we can get them answered. I suppose one, Steve, I'll, I'll direct them to yourself. I know we've other people here on the call that might be able to help. Um, for you, and it's not completed by the end of, 2025, will the full amount of the refund be looked for by Ishka Aaron or will it be pro rata for just the units not completed? Thanks, Paddy. Yeah, it's a good question. And it's one, so as I said, we've been working with the departments and we've kind of been back and forth as this um as this process has developed. And we are only kind of really getting into the detail of the closure piece, but that was the question we asked uh, a while back. And the I suppose the direction we've been given is that it would be pro rata. So it won't be, it'll be basically what isn't complete. And I suppose the message from the department is this is to promote commencement, is to promote um, development, it's to promote housing. So it's not looking to penalise. So basically it is pro rata. Excellent, excellent. Um, another one, I suppose, if if all ish gear and contribution is paid up front, is the refund only for completed units? I know we we kind of maybe reiterating over a couple of things, but it's no harm to do that. Um, so the the refund is, I suppose, maybe there could be two parts to this. So if you have paid your connection charge and you have a valid commencement notice and you have a letter of approval. You can come to us like immediately and seek a refund for your standard connection charges. Um, I suppose we're not, we're not this this refund scheme is based on commencement notice, it's based on the letter of approval. It's not based on commit, it's not based on completion at this stage. As I said, there will be, I suppose, the, the clawback piece and the completion will be looked at at the end of 2025. I hope that answers the question. Um no problem. Um, another one, I suppose, came in there as well. Uh, how long, on average, do you think it will be for the from the day you pay your water charge and um, for the day that you have your refund? I suppose that's what would be the average time if all the correct criteria is met. I know you spoke on that, Stephen, about 
the correct criteria going going back into ourselves being key for that to be a more efficient, I suppose. But yeah. what would be the average timeline, or have we at that at this stage? Okay, I suppose that to, just just to be clear, there's a couple of things there. I think the first one is look, um, once you pay your water connection charge, and the, the next step is you know obviously commencing on site, getting that uh, letter of approval from the local authority. At that stage, you can come to us and apply for a connection refund. So I think that's probably one point just to note there that even if you paid for your connection charge, it's not an automatic refund. You need to come to us with this documentation. You need to submit it, and then we can start to process your refund. So I hope that adds a bit of clarity. Just in terms of the second point there, we're at a very early stage, so I can't exactly say what the timelines are. Um, we expected probably more volume uh, early, um, earlier in the scheme. And we'd hope maybe in the next um you know month or so we kind of get a feel for for how long it is taking to process. Um I'm I'd be a small bit low to kind of give you an indication at the moment because I'll be honest, what we've seen early doors is uh, probably a lot of single domestic customers. We processed a number of them and they've been um I suppose quick and simple. I think as we get into the development side and um, we've um greater complexity in terms of number of units and then going through the compliance check stage, we get a better feel for timelines. So from your perspective, um, if you have all the documentation in place, that's great. That will help it. But at this moment in time, we don't have a feel for how long it will take the process because there are other elements in terms of compliance check and so on. Uh, the batching and moving it through our, our side. Um, but hopefully in the next in the next couple of months, we might be able to give an indication of, of how long it will take. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, I suppose one maybe it's a comment. I know, I know the answer would probably be a small bit. You don't have a crystal ball there, Stephen. But do you feel this might be something that will be ex extended? And that's the first part of the question. I suppose second part of the question that we have a few of them coming in is if you can talk us through what is completion um look like from from, from an Ishkinero point of view and from this refund point of view, what what triggered the completion? And I suppose, does the scheme have to be completed as in people moved in before the refund uh, application is applied for or do you need a BCMS completion sort of what exactly do we need on that? What does completion look like to trigger the refund process? Okay. Thanks, Paddy. Just to the first question, um, like yourself, we're working um, on this scheme um, from the perspective of supporting the department and the government. So I don't know if it will be extended at the moment. There's fairly clear um, fairly clear dates for completion. So, um, yeah, as you say, Paddy, it's, it's difficult to kind of look into the future and see what will happen, but that's that's it for the moment. Um, in terms of completion, again, this is a department um, scheme and um, they've, they've fairly clearly defined in discussions with us what they consider completion. And it is in accordance with the, the the building regulations. And my understanding of it is it's that up, it's up to wall plate level. So it's completion of the units in terms of the building reg codes. It's not actually occupancy by um by the people buying houses. Very good, very good. Um, I suppose we have is another one there. Uh, at what stage does Ishgaran issue the refund to the developer? Is it the 12 months post issuing a confirmation cert or how does that look? Another couple of questions that we've had in in relation to Steve, which I'm, I'm not sure would you be able to discuss that or will you have in-depth knowledge is in relation to what the local authority require letter-wise, what exactly is that going to look like or do you know at this stage? Um, I could probably answer the second one fairly quickly. Um, look, that I, I'm I wouldn't be overly familiar with what they're looking for. My understanding is it's it's clear, you know, we've referenced these circulars, you know, within the slides and I'm I'm sure you've all seen them, but I'll be honest, I don't know exactly what they look for in terms of commencement or you know, if there's um site visits and so on. I believe it's 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 likely different in each local authority planning department. Um and I wouldn't I wouldn't like to comment with any um any degree of um full knowledge. Um in terms of um, refund payment, look, I, I, I'm getting the feeling there's a small bit of a theme in terms of some of the questions coming up and maybe there's a, a misunderstanding. So look, I, I'll say it again. So what we need from yourselves is that you obviously have entered into connection agreement. You paid for it, you met all the criteria of it, so surety, et cetera. You paid for your standard charges, your quotable charges, you provided your letter acceptance, you met all the conditions in the offer, so you paid for it. 
obviously then the next step as I see it from yourself would be um you commence and your commencement date matches the department scheme criteria so you've commenced since April 2023 and you can commence up to April 2024 once you have commenced and once you have that letter of approval you can come back into us and submit for a refund application so look it's from from our perspective we're supporting the department to incentivize commencements uh, we're supporting the department for how uh, from a housing for all perspective so we're not looking I suppose one of the criteria for us is not that the units are complete in the time and that we will refund we will refund once you have commenced and you have that letter of approval from the local authority planning department hope that kind of adds a bit of clarity for people Thanks, Steve. So, um, maybe one last question. There's been a lot of interaction, which has been great. I suppose a question that was asked, and I know I've come across it myself, um, in my engagement with developers and developer community. If I started, and I'm, I'm putting myself in a developer's shoes, I suppose if I started prior to the 23rd of April, Stephen, and I paid my ish gear and connection charges prior to that, and I started prior to that, but it was still within the 2023 20, calendar, for example, if I did start, in we'll we'll say in May or, or or sorry if I started prior to April is that applicable and if in if not what would make it applicable um if it was the case if it was just prior to it if we're just on the edge before the twenty third of April I'm wondering so yeah I suppose look I'll, I'll clearly say look Fishgear we're not the competent authority in terms of commencement notices you know so like we're really reliant on the local authority planning department basically saying scheme complies or it doesn't comply uh, and providing that letter of approval to yourselves you know that we're reliant on that letter of approval that's the key control document for us in terms of processing a refund now um in terms of those edge scenarios it, it it's probably not of you know in terms of when you paid for your connection um offer if you paid for it even last year or if you paid before the start that's not the concern for us. The concern, the, the key piece for us is when you commenced. If you commenced in terms of the scheme criteria from the department, you have the letter of approval, we will refund. In terms of commencement dates not matching the scheme criteria, we'll be wholly reliant on the planning department's uh, decision on that. And again, the letter of approval initiative to yourselves. Now, within the circular, and I'm, I'm sure you, you guys have read it as well, there is there was an allowance for those kind of cases where... Um, I wouldn't be quoting on this now, but I think it was if you had actually submitted your commencement notice in advance of that date, and there might have been a number of weeks prior to that, um, that would have been facilitated. But it is clearly called out in the circular, the timeline there of, the, of those real edge scenarios. And, um, so look at we one or two more questions. We'll while, while they're coming, we'll stay going because it's good. It's good to have this interaction. I suppose the question, Steve, would be in relation to apartment blocks and what is the criteria associated with apartment blocks? And also then there was a question associated with mixed use developments, you know, where you have amenity space, which is directly linked to the residential unit. Is this classified as commercial or is it a rebate recoverable? Um, so in terms of uh, apartment units, so they are considered residential units under the scheme. So they would be subject to to refund as well if they meet the scheme, if you meet the scheme criteria and you have your letter of approval. Um, in terms of mixed use, it's the residential unit element of your of your mixed use development. So if you have a connection agreement with us, say for 110 units for a, a multi mixed use development, 10 of those units are commercial. It will be the remaining 100 residential units that would uh, be subject to the, uh, the scheme hopefully that's that answers the question perfect perfect thank you very much um i'll go with one last question because look it has said it has been really good and we really appreciate it um for large developments i.e 100 units we get we get phase build so they're on a phase build lodging five commencement notices during that period can we lodge uh, Ishka Air and claim for, for each commencement notice? Um, and will that be five individual refunds? Or I suppose, could you discuss this through, Steve, how that would work or what it would look like? Yeah, that's a really good question. So that is a scenario we thought of. Like, so basically, we will be refunding the number of units that you have commenced, that you have a waiver for, and that you have a letter of approval. So if you commence in five phases of, say, 20 units, I would be recommending you submit each of those um, 
each of those applications for refunds to so submit five of them to us. If you have a connection agreement with, with 100 units under us, each of those um, five requests for a refund would come under that connection agreement and we would process it as it goes through. So um, I, yeah, I would be recommending as you get your commencement notice, come to us and seek a refund. Yeah. I suppose I, I, I'm I'm uh, really stretching this out, Steve. So look, appreciate your understanding. I'm going. I promise this will be the last question, but but I think it's actually quite a relevant one, and one I've come across as well before. As I said in my engagement, is I have a I have a large development, 100 units, and I'm doing it in a phase basis, as an awful lot of development community do, for cost perspective, for everything, and a delivery point of view. If I have started the phase uh, prior to this rebate, but I I am doing the remaining four phases, shall we say, if I've started phase one in in January, February, and then I have phase two, three, four, and five will be starting outside of it. Is it is it going to be is that going to be an issue? Uh, no, that's absolutely something we can we can we can deal with. It's, uh, we built this process and this machine behind us to support this, you know. So again, as I say, and, and I, you probably think I'm repeating myself, but if you have a commencement notice. And the local authority planning department, as the you know, as as the um, I suppose as the as the real authority here, decide that yeah, your commencements in terms of your phases two, three, four, and five meet the scheme criteria. You will get your letter of approval. You can come to us, and you know, if we have if everything aligns and everything's in order, we will refund based on those commencement notices, those letter of approval, and we'll um we we'll get that refund out to you for the associated units. Now, obviously, just to be clear, the first phase didn't meet the criteria, so you're not going to have a letter of approval. So we won't be able to process the refund for those units. Brilliant. Um, look, guys, I think I'm going I'm to leave that there. We've had an awful lot of good questions, which is great. Um, Steve, thank you very much for answering them. And I'd like to thank everyone that contributed to them. It's great. It makes these events more worthwhile, I think, if people are contributing. Just to maybe reiterate again, uh, if you have a question that, you felt you needed a bit more clarity on or a question or a question that comes into your head after this, please feel free to direct it through ourselves or direct it through uh, on you and the team there and the IHBA CIF and we'd be more than happy to answer it. The just to reiterate again, the presentation will be circulated um in PDF. And I do think look it's a great it's a great presentation that answers an awful lot of the questions once you go through it. I know it's a lot of information to take in just now, but I think when you sit down and digest it the, all the information is there, which is great. And um, finally, from an Ishkaran point of view, we just really want to thank everyone that's attended. Firstly, you're important that you provide the questions. That's vitally important. You're you're making the proactive step to to be here, which is great. And I really do think you would have all got something from it. And um, secondly, really, really want to thank the CIF and the IHBA for working in collaboration with us. It's something that is needed. We all need to work together to, to, to get out the other side uh, of these housing targets and delivery. And I think it's great to be part of that. And it's great to have such a lovely group to work with in on you, Michael and Connor. So really appreciate that. So thank you very much. Thanks, uh, Paddy, uh, and Steve and all the team at uh, Ishgair and most appreciated. Just in relation to some of the comments there uh, and queries about the timescales for the both the waiver and the rebate scheme, just to let members know this is part of our budget submission that we are seeking an extension of the waiver and the rebate schemes uh, look the evidence so far is very positive in terms of uh, the commencement numbers and we believe fundamentally that this waiver and rebate scheme are contributing to the increase in the commencements following a period of high inflation in construction materials and costs as you're all aware of uh, so look we will be campaigning for an extension of this in due course once we have more evidence in relation to commencements and completions for this year just in relation to, to other IHBA matters, just to uh, advise members, obviously the presentation will be circulated to everyone in attendance today. Just also to say that a circular will issue this afternoon to all members a survey in relation to connections to the electricity network. We'd ask all members to please uh, reply to that so that we can get a greater insight into the problems you're facing uh, in that area with electricity connections. Uh, the compact growth guidelines are out for submission and we'll be finalizing our submission on those uh, on those guidelines by next Monday. Uh, so if you have any final comments, please contact the IHBA team. Uh, look, our next events will be a webinar on Health and Safety Week in October. Further details will issue. 
as well as the CIF National Conference this Thursday and Prospects, which was a very successful event last year, will be held out in Swords again this year on the 29th of November. Um, look, I'll leave it for now. We're looking forward to some major policy developments over the next number of weeks and months in planning with the new planning and development bill, the compact growth guidelines and the revision of the national planning framework. So look, we do need member input and feedback to all of those matters. So thanks once again for your attendance here today and the presentation will be circulated in due course. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Paddy. Thanks, Anya. Bye.